Hello, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is part 15 in my sequence of videos about multivariable calculus using the computer program Mathematica. We've been following along in chapter 11 of the second edition of Multivariable Calculus by John Rogoski. And basically, in this part 15, we're trying to finish up section 11.2. In part 16, we're going to work into section 11.3, which is technically about polar coordinates. However, I still want to talk about polar coordinates as well as later topics in the context of parametric curves. In this video, our goal is to find the exact distance traveled, or arc length, along a very special kind of curve called a cycloid, and we can think of that as a parametric curve. Here is the example. We want to find the exact distance, emphasis on the word exact, traveled along this cycloid curve. The formula is right here, c of t is a point valued function. The first coordinate is f of t, the second coordinate is g of t, t is time, you imagine. f of t is t minus sine t, and g of t is one minus cosine t. We're thinking about this over the interval from zero to four pi. And I want to find this exact distance traveled both as a function of time, dis of t, giving you the distance traveled from time zero to time t, and at the ending value of t, t equals four pi, we want to find dis of four pi. So I want to show you, first of all, some Mathematica code that is going to show you what's going on here visually. I'm not explaining this code here. We're just going to look at the output. Up in the upper left corner here, you see a graph in the xy plane of a circle and a dot of the very bottom of the circle at the origin. You want to imagine the circle to be a wheel and the dot is a point on the wheel. And what we're doing is we're following the motion of the dot as the wheel moves along the x-axis. And the curve that it follows is called the, a cycloid, and that's the curve whose, dist, whose length we want to find, whose arc length we want to find. We want to find the distance traveled by this point through space here. The graph in the upper right is the graph of the y-coordinate of the point as a function of time, so it's keeping track vertically of what's going on. The graph down here, that's smaller than it should be, but I couldn't get it to work out nicely any other way, is the graph of the x-coordinate of the point as it moves. It keeps track of the left-right motion. Here the motion is always to the right. So this graph, if you look at it with your head turned sideways, is always increasing, though it does have a horizontal tangent at 2 pi. In the lower right, we have the speed of function. That's red. It gives you the instantaneous speed at any moment in time. And here, the blue curve, that's the distance travel function. This is the one whose formula we are after, and we are also after its value at 4 pi, which looks like it's around 16 or so. But we want an exact answer. So we need to do some math now. You want to have a piece of paper ready so you can do the calculations and check what's going on here. We want to first calculate a simplified formula for the speed. You should do that right now. Use this formula that I've highlighted. I will use Mathematica to do my calculation. You should pause it. You'll need a trigonometric identity. You'll need the fundamental Pythagorean identity that cos squared t plus sine squared t is always 1. And here's what you should get. Square root of 2 minus 2 cos t. That is the speed as a function of time. That was the red graph in the lower right corner. We now want to use this to find the distance traveled as a function of time. I'm going to do this in text mode here. I've talked about in previous videos that if you're starting the motion at time zero and you don't count any motion at that moment in time, you want a particular antiderivative that, whose graph goes through the origin. You want to integrate the speed from zero to t to get that right distance traveled. I do use uh, a different letter here for my variable of integration. I want to emphasize that t is in the upper limit of the integral. So I use a different letter. How about the Greek version of t, which is tau? So this is the integral that we must do for this particular speed function. So that's going to simplify to square root of 2 minus 2 cos tau d tau. All right, that's the integral to do. As with many integrals involving trig functions, you need to use a trigonometric identity identity to help you solve it. And the one that's useful here is the fact that sine squared of any angle theta equals one half minus one half cosine of two times that angle, no matter what theta is. Okay, think about how this might be useful. I hope you can figure it out. If we take the right hand side here and replace the two theta with a tau, 
and also multiply it by 4, we will get this exact expression under the square root. So in fact, this integral will be the integral of the square root of 4 times the sine squared of tau over 2. If tau is 2 theta, then theta will be tau over 2. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this down here. So the integral that we're after can be written as the integral of the square root of 4 sine squared tau over 2. I hope you look at that and say that looks pr more promising than the first integral. For one thing, we can take the square root of 4 as 2 and bring it out in front of the integral. You do have to be careful with the square root. Technically speaking, the square root of sine squared of tau over 2 is not sine of tau over 2. It is the absolute value of sine of tau over 2. That is relevant here. It is something that's going to make this problem a little extra tricky. T is varying from 0 to 4 pi. When T itself is between 0 and 2 pi, then T over 2 will be between 0 and pi, and the sign will be positive, non-negative at least. And when T is between um, 2 pi and 4 pi, then you're going to have to use a negative sign in there. So again, when t is between 0 and 2 pi, the absolute value of sine of t over 2 will be equal to sine of t over 2. And when t is between 2 pi and 4 pi, the absolute value of the sine of t over 2 will be the opposite of the sine of t over 2. That will be relevant here, okay? So we need to think about this. Let's do case one. T is between 0 and 2 pi. That'll be the easy case. The distance traveled, dist of t, will equal in that case this, well in other cases it'll equal this integral, but in this case you can get rid of the absolute value signs. And this is a fairly easy integral to do. You'll get negative 4 cosine tau over 2, where tau goes between 0 and t. Like this. And when you do that, you'll get, if you're careful, you'll get 4 minus 4 cosine t over 2. So there's the answer in case 1, when t is between 0 and 2 pi. How about case 2? That's trickier. By the way, if t is between 0 and 2 pi, then so is uh, tau for this integral. In case 2, t is now between 0 and 4 pi. I need the absolute value sign back in here. Let's copy and paste this back down here. This is still true. That, that fact right there is true. But the rest of this is, does not work anymore. What you want to do is you want to split this up into the sum of two integrals. An integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of tau over 2, positive, plus an integral from 2 pi to t of the absolute value of sine of tau over 2 which will be negative sine of tau over 2, so I can change this plus sine to a minus sine. All right, let's go on to the next line here. It won't be blue anymore, I think, but... Yeah, okay. Uh, first case, this integral times 2 is going to give you exactly this with t equals 2 pi plugged in. When you plug in t equals 2 pi here, 2 pi over 2 is pi, cosine of pi is negative 1. You ultimately get 4 minus 4 times negative 1. 4 plus 4 is 8. For the next one, doing this integral here, I'm going to put the 2 along in there as well. I'm going to get a plus 4 cosine of tau over 2. And for that part, again, tau will go from 2 pi up to t. All right, when you plug in tau equals 2 pi, you get 2 pi over 2, which is pi. Cosine of pi, again, is negative 1. So ultimately what you're going to get here is 8 plus 4 cosine of t over 2 
minus um, negative 4, which will be plus 4. This 8 will become an 8 plus 4 is 12. So this is going to be the formula that you get in case 2. And that's the answer as far as dist of t. Combine these two cases into a piecewise function. We can also now find dist of um, 4 pi. Again, I want text mode here. Dist of 4 pi, the total distance traveled will be 12 plus 4 cosine of 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is 1, so you get 12 plus 4, you get 16 here. That's the total distance traveled as t goes from 0 to 4 pi. All right, let's get Math Mathematica to uh, plot this. In fact, I actually already did. I typed it in. Here's how you could type it into Mathematica. Dist of t, you could use the piecewise function down here. 4 minus 4 cosine of t over 2, when t is between 0 and 2 pi. And then 12 plus 4 times cosine of t over 2, when t is between 2 pi and 4 pi. I actually already entered it. You can see now when we do the uh, entering of the code down here, it doesn't change what we originally saw. We will see the distance function is a continuous function. There it is, the blue graph down there. That's what we were after. Uh, as far as an approximation for dist of 4 pi, it was about it was exactly 16 actually yes all right here's your exercise basically you're just generalizing what I did you have this arbitrary R in there so the answer is going to depend on R here's dist of T in the first case here's dist of T in the second case and the total distance traveled over 4 pi units of time is 8R and when you enter all this stuff to see the animation, you can do a double animation. Not only do we see time go by, but I also allowed you to change R, which allows you to change the size of the wheel, make it smaller or larger, which does affect the distance traveled. Okay, and that'll be the end of this video.